Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from the Be A Photographer channel. In this video, we're gonna be editing one of the shots from my pink themed photo shoot that I shot in my living room in a studio type environment. If you haven't seen episode one, check that out. That'll walk you through all the gear that I used, which isn't much, it's actually not that expensive. You can do this with whatever camera you have, honestly, with any lens. Uh, you could crank the ISO if you don't have an F 1.8 or F2 lens, but you can get a 51.8. And then we used one LED light. We used two V flats. My name is Dasanka. My Instagram is Dasanka J, and I'm stoked for you guys to see these photos but you could just use $20 reflectors instead. And we got some really awesome shots. So in this video, I'm gonna be going through some of the shots in Capture One Pro 20 that you can see right here. And then we're gonna do a full edit using both Capture One Pro 20 and Adobe Photoshop CC on this image right here. Now, the reason that I choose this image is because it has a little bit of a challenge and that is this gap in the background between the V flat and the pink. I basically wanna make this look more studio white, but not too bright. I wanna keep it a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna do some retouching on Dasanka's skin and her eyes. Already looks amazing. I could tell you guys that this photo, if I posted or if I printed, I'd be pretty happy with it. This is definitely not a bad image. And this is gonna go from what I like to say is very good, to a great image that I'm gonna actually end up putting on my website, which is why I decided to edit this one first. Now, the first thing I did with this image actually is I went to my other images, and as I mentioned in episode one, I have a gray card which I used. So if we take a look at the very first image that we shot, we used a gray card right here, and that way I could set the custom white balance by using the picker tool. You can do this in Lightroom as well, so you just click here. Let's say it was messed up. You can see her skin looks very off. If I set the white balance using the picker tool on the gray card right here, we get the perfect white balance. And then I could, uh, what I did is I copy pasted it from here and went into the image that we're editing. So the first thing I wanna do is start with the white balance to make sure that is correct. And then I'm gonna make sure I have that same white balance in all the images I edit and I can do a color grade later on. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill mask. So you can see if I press M, that'll fill the mask. I'm gonna do that same thing. So I'm gonna bring the saturation of the pink way up. And then I'm simply gonna take my eraser tool on this mask and I'm going to erase away from her lips. So you can see now we're erasing that mask right here. Boom, whoops. And now we can see when we turn it on and off, it just adds more pink to the background and to the suit jacket, which looks really nice. And it doesn't affect the pink anywhere else. So now I'd say I'm ready to edit in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm gonna do in Photoshop is run the action for frequency separation 2.0, which I got from the Pro EDU FS 2.0 tutorial. And basically with this, I'm gonna be able to clean up textures and change the lighting a little bit on the skin and I'll be able to do the same thing with the background. So I just ran that action. I'm doing this image in 16-bit. Um, you can do some images in 8-bit. I recommend if your computer will handle it 16-bit and that way there won't be as much banding issue. You can see because there's a gradient on the pink, it goes from brighter to darker. So the first thing I'm gonna do is using this method, uh, and I know this video might be a bit longer you guys, but I'm going to fill in the texture to the left side so basically where we have let me turn this off where we have this gap on the left i'm going to bring in the same texture as the paper and then i'm going to extend that color as well so first thing we're going to take the clone stamp tool and we're going to copy in the texture here first thing I did is I got the texture over from the paper. You can't really see it with your naked eye, but it's there. And then what I'm gonna do is use my blend brush and basically bring this pink over. So I'm just gonna grab like so. And you can see in real time, we are extending the pink seamless paper. So yeah, you could do this with content aware fill, but I've just gotten into the habit of doing everything pretty much with frequency separation 2.0, and it doesn't take too long. You can see it's shaking my desk and monitor a little bit. Sorry about that, you guys. Voila, now you can see that the left side of the paper has been extended with texture. So there's the before, and now it looks like the seamless goes and the gradient kind of perfectly follows. We have the same texture if we zoom in, so it doesn't look like we just grabbed a color. We have that a uh, little bit of porous texture from the paper, and that is great. Next, what I'm gonna do is clean up a little bit on the skin. Mm -hmm. 
step two, you can see we removed some of the small blemishes from the skin. So all we did was using the high frequency layer, we just removed just a couple of lines and small dots. My philosophy on editing is this. If you were to do the shoot a different day and that piece of the skin might look different, be it you know some sort of acne that might go away or a line in the skin like a wrinkle that could have been covered up with makeup but wasn't, I typically will remove it. Now I don't go like super fake airbrush levels and I don't like that look, but that is kind of my philosophy. So what I'm doing right now is using the lower frequency separation layer and blending a little bit of the light. So you can see we're removing not the complete shadow under the eye, but some of it. And that way what happened is the shadow under the eye and the eye bags with both the high frequency and the low has created this very smooth skin underneath the eyes without those eye wrinkles, which are totally normal. That goes a little bit past the acne removal, but that's kind of the level of beauty retouching that you'll see right now. And it still looks fairly realistic. You know, it doesn't look like there's something off when you look at this image. So that is how I like to do the edit now that I know how to do frequency separation. And we'll do a little bit of dodge and burn to lighten this side of the face momentarily. And there we go. So now we have frequency separation done. And the third piece before we do the dodge and burn and the eyes is going to be fixing this gap right here. Now I could try content aware fill, but again, I'm just, just going to do this in portions with frequency separation. And so I'm gonna do this piece here first. You'll see we added both lighting and texture replacement over here. So you'll see that we had the texture there. That is the gap between the two pieces and there it is gone, so that's fixed. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing right up here. So first, I'm actually gonna do the light movement first, and then I will do the texture. Okay, so now we have a hard line built, and we have just a little bit of texture there, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Using the curves layer, I just added a piece of white right here, and so we have that right there. I can also tone that down and there we go. So we went from this to this. And if we wanted, we could also just fill it with the same pink and extend the entire background. So I could do two versions of this shot. Now that it's all been kind of edited together the way that I like with the white and the pink and the frequency separation done, I'm gonna go ahead and combine those as one layer and then run another action from the Pro EDU tutorials, and that is the Danny Diamond retouching tutorial, and I can go right into Dodge and Burn. So on Dodge and Burn, uh, it has a custom setup here, and I'm gonna do 5% um, opacity and 100% flow. And the big goal is to not really be able to notice that anything's happening until you do an on and off with the layer. And typically I'll go a little bit too harsh just so I can see what I'm working on. And after that, I will tone down the layer opacity completely. Now you can see with the dodge and burn enabled, and I'll turn that layer off, turn it back on. You can see it just adds a little bit more shape to the face. It's just a little bit of contouring and tone that down. And then we will go into the eyes. Since we had a constant light, the pupils were not dilated. So we had a lot of color showing up in the eyes, in the iris, and it looked great. And this is kind of what it came out in Capture One Pro 20 as. Here is the edit we just did. I always find my edit to be a little bit strong on the eyes. So again, I turned that down similar to the dodge and burn. And you can see the dodge and burn and eyes going on and off here. And the last thing we're gonna do is add some contrast using that boost. And we can also play with color balance here if we wanted to. And I have an image from yesterday that I was working on. Yesterday I did the toning on this image, so what I'm gonna do is grab the toning folder from here and just duplicate the group to my current image that we're working on. And now we have our tones done. So I think this is, again, a little bit strong due to the levels, yep. So I'm just gonna turn this down, also around 70%. And that's where we were after Capture 120. This is where we are now, and that is my completed image. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If it made any sense to you, please leave a comment down below. I have no idea what the video length is, but let me know what type of videos you'd like to see on this channel. I'll try to make them and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe. Peace.